Hey, comment lurker here, and apparently my recording method sucks. Uh, no news there, I suppose. Last time we were a poltergeist, and I said we were going to explore a bit more Gripgate, loot a few things. I lied. We're not going to do that. We are going to look into this character creation stuff. As you can see, there are two main options, mutated human and true human. True humans have better stats, but mutated humans can get mutant abilities. Uh, I'd say only go for a true human if you are just starting the game out, because it's hard enough to uh, play this game at the beginning when you don't know what you're doing. To have that extra handicap of having lower stats as a mutated human, you might not be able to really uh, get that far. Mutated humans, though, in the long run, end up being stronger because they get all these mutant abilities that helps with survival and various other things. So, I'd say if you really have a hold of how to play the game or are watching these videos, Mutated Human is what you should always choose. Strength is how well you are at hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat and how much stuff you can carry. Just going to go through these quickly. Agility is the um, gun version of that, how well you are with guns. It's also how well you can dodge. Uh, toughness is how many uh, hit points you gain a level and how quickly you regenerate hit points over time. Intelligence is how many skill points you get. Skill points is are pretty much uh, the system of how you learn different abilities, not mutant abilities, the other abilities, the um, skill abilities, you could say. Skill points, skill ability, it makes some sense. So. This is the kind of stuff that you invest in becoming better at axes, or better at shielding, or better at tinkering. That's where intelligence comes in. Uh, willpower and ego are very much more mutant abilities than anything else, especially willpower. Willpower helps you... Uh, it, fr it looks like from the uh, text that willpower is supposed to make you get back the ability to use mutant abilities faster. Uh, I'm not really sure how that exactly works, but it also seems to help with hit point regeneration. So, I guess if you're a true human, you have some use for willpower. Uh, if, if you are... For whatever reason, you want to put something there, but... Ego. Ego is um, maybe a little bit more useful. For true humans, it is uh, used to sell f stuff for higher prices, more drams per for an item, and it also is useful for making your attacks just more powerful. Uh, that works with domination in a little different way. It makes your domination more likely to work. So, ego is really important if you're going to be a mutant that uses these mutant abil uh, abilities and attacks and stuff. So that's really the main reason why you don't really have to invest any mutant points into domination, and you could put them all into new uh, mutations. So I generally go with a very even approach for this. Uh, notice how when you get to 18, it says it takes two points to increase it, and indeed it does. Before that, it only takes one point. So I never really spend those two points to get anything higher. Nothing really needs to be that high. Uh, this is about my setup. There. The worth, almost worthless willpower is put very low. There is something that I plan to use it for, that I want it to be at 17 at some point for, but we don't need it 17 immediately. It will be going up automatically, so we can just leave it at 15. Toughness, we are going to do something else for to make it actually our highest stat, stat which is why we have it so low. So here are the various mutations. If you're a true human, you don't have to worry about these. Another reason why you might want to be a true human, you don't have to uh, learn about all this stuff. I don't want to go too deep into any of this. You guys will have to explore it yourself if you really want to see everything. But I'll go into some of this. These first two morphotypes affect which mutations you manifest. Mutations are split up into physical mutations and mental mutations. Physical mutations like having multiple arms or being able to um, fly with wings. 
mental mutations and more being able to confuse or control your enemy or precognition. So, if you want to only develop one of these types when you buy a new random mutation, I guess you can go for one of these, but I don't really find these, all these useful. Uh, in order to get one of these things, you have to put one point in, and the points come from these 12 points. You may as well spend all these 12 points, because they're not going to be going back into your character after this. Uh, oh, Unstable Genome. Unstable Genome lets you manifest a new random mutation after levels, sometimes. Uh, each time you invest into Unstable Genome, you get two possible manifestations, or three possible manifestations. Yeah, e each time you get an, an additional manifestation you can get later on. It's essentially like buying a any of these abilities, except not being able to use them immediately, which is only useful when they cost more than four points. And even then, it's, particularly, it's, it's pretty random what Unstable Genome will give you, if it even gives you anything. And, uh, hold on one second. Uh, sorry about that. Um, back to game stuff. Uh, where were we? We were talking about physical mutations. Uh, I'll just go over a few that are useful, that are at least worth discussing. Some of these other ones may not be so terrible, but you'll have to look at them yourself if you are going to learn what they do and stuff. Uh, burrowing Claws is the first of the digging abilities. The only one that literally digs, uh, I classify digging ability as anything that lets you get past walls that you normally can't. That includes phasing, which I showed you last time. That lets you go through walls. It doesn't really dig, but I don't really care. Digging ability sounds cool, so that's what I call them. Uh, burrowing claws costs a total of three, as you can see. Uh, and that makes it one of the less expensive digging abilities. It lets you literally dig through walls, and in that way, it can be one of the best digging abilities. It makes permanent passageways, unlike phasing, which you have to re-instantiate, I guess. Yeah, every time you want to go through a wall, uh, burrowing claws just makes the wall permanently go throughable. The problem with burrowing claws, though, is it makes it so you can't wear gloves, which is not nice if you want to wear nice stuff like uh, Alnar, stimulators or a force bracelet actually force bracelets might be for your arm now that I think about it um, but that, more of that later uh, corrosive gas generation is another type of digging ability essentially I, I talked about this a little bit before you're able to send corrosive gas around your entire character you may have seen a honey skunk do that in the last uh, part of the let's play a last run, and this lets you just destroy walls, also hurt enemies a little bit, and destroy some things that you want to pick up. Nice weapons and things that may be behind walls might be destroyed by corrosive gas generation. That's its big problem. All these digging things tend to have problems of some sort, so you really have to decide what you want to stick with. Um, Going down the list a little bit, Electric Generation, it's a very, very powerful attack, especially early on in the game, but unlike other mutations, it doesn't get stronger when Ego goes up, so it'll eventually lag behind other abilities, and in that way, it's not such a fantastic ability. One reason why I stick with it is it seems to make electric attacks hurt my character less. I don't know, it might just be my imagination. But it seems like before I started using electrical generation, electric attacks were really dangerous, really hurt my guy a lot. And uh, ever since I got electrical generation, I stopped dying to wage droids and other electric type enemies. So that's, I, that's really a good reason why I have been sticking with it. If any of you can tell me that this does not make you better against electric attacks, I'd be happy to hear that. Um, here are two abilities that happen to be someone's favorite, at least this one, Flaming Hands. One, uh, bo both these abilities let you shoot their respective elements 
at an opponent. You can hit multiple opponents, which is really good. But like burrowing claws, it makes you not able to wear gloves. They are very very powerful. <clears throat> the main difference between anything flaming and anything freezing is flaming sets things on fire so that they get passive damage over time. And freezing makes things lose turns when they freeze so you could just pummel them as they're stuck being frozen. Uh, I don't really know which one would necessarily be better, but there is a quest later on that uses flaming attacks. You, you essentially need to have something that can create fire. It doesn't have to be a mutation, or else true humans wouldn't be able to beat this game, if there's even a way to beat the game. I don't know, I've never gotten far enough. But... Yeah, that, that's the only reason why I might say flaming is better than freezing. Uh, one big weakness that flaming has, though, is it tends to destroy things. Uh, freezing also can destroy things, but it doesn't destroy things as much as flaming. So you may attack someone with your flaming attack, and then everything that they were holding might be destroyed, or most of the things, and then you can't really use them later on. So that's one reason why I tend to not stick with these particular attacks, even though they are powerful. Multiple arms, that should be a very powerful ability because it gives you two extra arms and two extra hands. Uh, so, you may, guys may have noticed bucklers are uh, equipped to your arms. I don't know if I've actually used that. Uh, bucklers can be equipped to your arms or your uh, be wielded directly like in any weapon or shield. And because of that, having two extra arms and two extra hands means being able to use four extra shields. And that should be really ridiculously overpowered, but it doesn't seem like shields work in this version. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. If I, I, I really don't know. I use shields anyways to make sure that I take advantage of any possible defense that shields give you. Also, the uh, shield skill that, you, that I bought only works when you have shields. But besides that, very odd. Uh, multiple legs just lets you carry more. I don't know why it costs five. It's not really worth it, in my opinion. It also lets you wear more shoes. Uh, let's see. Phasing, you saw that. Uh, let's see. Let's just go through a few more of these. Some of these are interesting, but I'll just skip over them. Um, let's see. Cryokinesis, these are the two kinesis. Pyro cryokinesis and pyrokinesis. This is cryo is in cryogenic, 